Welcome to a quick overview of Google Drive and how it truly works with folders. In other words, folders as labels. Now, if you've been using Google Drive a little bit, you might already be familiar with the way you simply drag and drop documents around from folder to folder, which makes them seem like regular folders. What you might not be aware of is that that's not really how it's working behind the scenes. Uh, you can use them as basic folders, but there are some exciting, more advanced ways of using folders in Google Drive. And that's really what this brief explanation is meant to give you. This is an excerpt of an explanation from a workshop that I've designed called Google Drive Essentials, offered here at the University of Alberta. And uh, I wanted to just make this available to people online. The assumption in the workshop is that people are familiar with the basics of Gmail and how Gmail organizes mail using labels. And this is very helpful for understanding how Google Drive works. So we'll start with a really quick review of uh, Gmail and labels, and then you'll see how it makes for an easy understanding of how Google Drive works with folders. As a quick review, in Gmail, uh, we have this concept called labels for organizing our mail. Uh, the, what, the, what we explain in our Gmail training is that your, ma your mail is stored in one giant bin called all mail and you're given a whole bunch of labels. In fact, if you migrate from a previous email program, all of your folders turn into labels. Now, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is that instead of moving mail messages into a new folder, relocating it, I simply add in a sort of a link to a label. Now, once I do that, the message itself doesn't actually move. But now that I've labeled it, if I click on that label, I see a list of all of the messages that have been labeled with that particular category. And lo and behold, there's the message that I was looking for. So it kind of looks like the message has moved into that list. And of course, in this case, uh, I labeled this message with project B, but now I'm thinking, mm, maybe not actually. I'd like to move this over to the project A list. No problem. I just remove the attachment to the project B label and instead connect it to the label project A. Now when I click on project B, that message does not appear in that list. And when I click on project A, the message appears in that list. So it seems like I moved the message. I didn't really. Now just to make sure we're totally clear on that, if I hop over here to my test Gmail account, you can see I've got labels called project A and project B. And some people may have even discovered that if I say went into my project B label, I've picked out a message here and I click on the move to icon, I can move it to my project A label. Now it leaves this list and moves over to this list. But of course the message itself didn't actually move. Now why is that important and potentially really exciting for how you organize your email? Well because I could have another label, let's say invoices. Now I'm thinking to myself, well does this does this message go into invoices or does it, does it go into project A? I mean, it could go into both. And that's what's great about Gmail. It can appear in both. I don't have to remove one label and add another one. I can have them both attached. And then the message shows up in both lists. It's not two different messages. It's the same message. It's just showing up in two different lists. And I'm sure if you're familiar with Gmail, you've probably done that before. Instead of using the move to button, you would simply select the message and say label and then additionally add the invoices label. Now it stays here in my project A list, but if I scroll down to my invoices label, it's also in that list. So now I can have extra layers of categorization and organization in my email. And what Google Drive, what they've done is the same concept of organization, but it can be a little tricky. It's not intuitive. Why? Because they've called them folders. And we all think of folders like folders on our computer. On your computer, you can only put a document into one folder. If you want to move it out of one folder and into another one, that's exactly what happens. You, you relocate it. Okay? But actually what's really going on here is uh, the same thing that's going to Gmail. Now let me just show you this in action just so we really care. If you play around with Google Drive at all, you'll notice that the same drag and drop functionality that you have on your computer uh, is here. So if I went into say my instructor documents folder and I decided mm, you know what whoops made a mistake this Jeff's document December 14th was really supposed to be in the project A folder I would just drag it over to here let go it's no longer in this folder and there it is in project A. So it looks to me like I just dragged it from one 
folder to the other, I moved it. And uh, they'll even call that action moving. And that's fine. You can use folders in Google Drive like that, no problem. It's what you're used to. But what I want you to understand is you don't have to use folders that way. In fact, it's pretty important that you understand how folders really work behind the scenes so that you can use them properly. So how are they working behind the scenes? Let's just hop back over to our PowerPoint presentation here. So I had a, uh, I had a document in my, let's say my Project B folder. And of course, what was happening? Same thing as Gmail. It was actually being labeled with Project B. The document itself is actually just sitting in this big bin called All Items. Now, when I dragged that document over to Project A, I didn't actually move the document. All that really happened is I just broke the association with the folder called Project B. All that's really happening is it's just relabeled. Okay? So it looks like it moved, but it didn't really move. Now, why I want to drive this home is because you can do the same thing in Google Drive that you could do in uh, Gmail, which is you can have documents show up in more than one folder. Why would you want to do that? Well, here's the example. This is a document. It's an invoice, but it's also related to the project. Gee, what folder do I put it in? Well, you can put it in both. You can just add a connection like so. Okay? So if I want to take this document and also have it show up in my invoices folder, I click on the document, I click on the Organize button, and you'll notice here that there's already a check mark beside Project A, and then what I do is I hold down the Control key if you're on Windows, Command key if you're on a Macintosh, and if you hold down the Command key and click, you will add a check mark. Notice if, the, if I wasn't holding down the Command key and I clicked it, it would do the move action. It would remove the old check mark, add the new check mark. But in this case, if I hold down the command key, I actually have more than one check mark. And now what happens is this document is in both the Project A folder and the invoice folder in the same way that was going on in Gmail. I l absolutely love this about Google Drive. It means that I can have different layers of organization for my documents. Uh, I can do what I've displayed, displayed here. Another way that I use this, a classic example I give my students, is something like a needs review folder. On my computer, I would never have a needs review folder because it would mean that I'd have to move documents out of a folder into the needs review folder to remind myself these documents need reviewing, but then I'd have to remember to move them back. I'm probably going to forget that I'm going to get disorganized. In this case, I simply add the extra layer of organization. Hold down the command key needs review. Now it's also in the needs review folder. So then I go into my needs review folder. Here's all the documents that need reviewing. So I come in here and check this. Uh, you, you know, you pick what you want. I always check mine once a day just to make sure I'm keeping up on these. So this one, uh, oh right, this one needed review. I go in there, I open it up, I review it, I make whatever um, you know, I make whatever review I'm, I'm being required to make. Now it no longer needs to be in the needs review folder. So I just select it, click organize again, hold down the command key. This is absolutely crucial. You always hold down the command or control key on Windows if, um, if you're doing this, uh, if you're treating folders as labels. And all I do is remove the check mark beside needs review. Now it's disappeared from that list, but of course it's still in any of the other folders that it was in. Okay. Now, what you might be thinking to yourself is, I really like this new functionality you've taught me, Jeff, but I don't know if I'm so keen on clicking the button and bringing down a list and putting check marks because I'm used to just dragging and dropping. Well, you can continue to do the drag and drop functionality, but still use this idea of adding documents to folders as opposed to moving them. The key, pardon the pun, is the control key or the option key if you're using the Mac OS. If you grab a document, while holding down the control key. So the control key is held down on my keyboard. I click and I drag. Notice how it says add this document as opposed to move. And then I let go of the button on, uh, I let go of my mouse button before letting go of the control button. Then notice how it did not remove this document from this particular list. It simply added it additionally to this list. So you can still use the drag and drop functionality. The only thing I will caution you here is uh, I don't like this one as much as the button and the checklist, right, this one. And the reason I like this better is it's harder to make a mistake this way. So if I click here without hitting the control key and, re and realize, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, I can just hit cancel, no harm done. 
Whereas, if I grab this particular document again, I grab the document using the control key, drag it, say, over to my uh, instructor docs folder, but then my finger slips, and then I let go of the mouse button, it, of course, moves the document as opposed to adding it. And it will remove that document from every list that it's in and only add it to the list that I drag it to. So this is where I get nervous. Now, of course, the moment that you make a mistake, you have a little bit of time to look up at the yellow message here, find the undo button, and undo whatever reorganizing you did. So if you are going to use the drag and drop and you find that your finger slips, definitely pay attention to that undo button. Well, I hope you found that explanation instructive. Of course, the one topic we haven't moved on to talk about is shared folders. Uh, over here in my list, you can see I've got the little person symbol in two of these folders. So these would be folders that uh, I'm sharing with others or are shared with me. Now, this is where understanding how folders really work becomes critically important. And I've uh, created another video companion to this one. It should be linked in the description below this YouTube video. Also from uh, my Google Drive Essentials Workshop, where I talk about shared folders, uh, an overview of the common mistakes and pitfalls made with shared folders, in particular how I recommend that you do not use the edit uh, setting when sharing folders uh, because it can become very easily to lose track of files and very easy for people to completely lose access to files. Uh, if people don't understand how folders work. Uh, in that video, I'll also go on to explain my recommended practices for how I think you should use shared folders. Uh, but hopefully this was a good introduction to how folders are really working behind the scenes. In other words, folders as labels. Yeah, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions about Google Drive or any custom training that you're interested in. And visit our website at the Technology Training Center if you're interested in the many Google Apps workshops that we offer, as well as our large number of uh, software and computer training that we offer.